nobody is going within three to six feet of each other. And it actually has not changed our life that much. And so I think when you go to the pharmacy, because people are going to the pharmacy now, you don't have to wait directly in line with someone. You can stand a couple feet back. And so the four things, I think I said four things. Always know where your hands are and have Purell. When you touch stuff that's outside your home, just make sure that you're washing your hand. Start to learn how to not touch your face. A really good way to do that is to start wearing a mask when you're out. And if you want to practice, wear a mask when you're home. Number three is you don't need an N95 mask or, or a medical mask. Any mask will do because this is not preventing the disease. This is training you. And then the fourth thing is just stay away from people. So that's the nitty gritty of, not, not stay away from people, stay three to six feet away from people. So that is the nitty gritty of not how to give yourself this disease or get it from your community um, where it is at this time. So I think this, when you understand those four rules, the next thing that I think is so important becomes true. Good? Yeah, sorry, Dave, go again. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to be scared of the outside world now. You don't have to be scared of your neighbor. And I have actually found that to be incredibly liberating right now. So in New York City, um, we're receiving food from delivery men. Um, we have to go outside to the grocery store. Um, it's a time when we're all really scared. Um, and I think it's what makes it worse is to when you go outside and to look and think that the person next to you is going to somehow harm you or harm your family. But when you know that the only way you're going to get this disease is if your hands are dirty and that if you touch your face and that if you are way too close to that person, that becomes incredibly liberating. And then all of a sudden, the person at the store is not your enemy. There's someone who's going through this with you. The delivery person is not your enemy. They're a hero. They're going out and, and delivering food at a time when there's a communicable disease that they don't understand. The mailman is a hero. You know, these are people that we have to, the same way we're acknowledging and celebrating healthcare providers. When you understand this disease and know exactly what to do to prevent getting it, then it allows us for the next couple of weeks to months to be able to to sustain the system that we have. We have to be able to have now. We have to be able to get delivery and seamless in New York City. It's the only way we eat. Um, but if you can protect yourself and you know your family's safe, then I think that's empowering. Socially, it's incredibly important, and we did this at my mom's house, is you have to shrink your social circle. And so what does that mean? So in our family, um, I think you guys know that my parents live on a farm. Um, we had a lot of traffic through the farm. We had um, families um, who, uh, you could, uh, um, who come and see the horses, um, who ride the horses. Um, but you have to understand that every person, um, every one of those people have potentially two or three other contacts and two or three other contacts. And so what I would highly encourage you guys to do as the country is shutting down is find your isolation group, find your... Um, your, your group of three people, four people, your family, um, and set boundaries. That is it. The people who are going to get this are people who are maintaining large social circles at this point. So what did that mean for my family? Is So Gene Young um, and our kids and my mom are on the farm. They're at the Hopewell house. And that is exclusively the social circle that they're, they're circling in. They talk to their family every day. They see people, you know, like through FaceTime, but there's no one coming in and out of the house. They can still go to the store and you can go to the store without any fear because you know if you wash your hands and you don't touch your face, you're not going to get this disease. And so it's very important at this point to keep your social circles small. Don't have, don't be going to the Elks Club or the Elks Club, excuse me. Um, don't be putting yourself in a situation where you have a lot of contact with a lot of people because it's just a vulnerability. You don't know that the person at the farm who you slapped hands with 
two days later will not have this disease because then that means that you're going to have to to socially isolate at that point even more So that is the simple, how do you prove? So the third thing um, that I wanna um, talk about is something that is inevitable in a group chat that's this large, which is what do you do if you get this disease? And this is, I think, if you listen to nothing else through this entire thing, just please listen to this part. In Wuhan, China, um, throughout the world, the vast majority of spread of COVID-19 is through home and family transmission. So I'll say that again. Throughout the world, the way this is transmitted is from husband to wife, father to son, daughter to brother, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, and so again, that's incredibly scary, but it's also something that if you understand the rules is incredibly empowering. So what do you do? If you develop a fever and you are otherwise fine, and isolate yourself from your family, so what does that mean? It's just simply about the same rules about your hands and touching your face is you don't want sustained contact with the person who's sick to the point where you're gonna be able to pick this up off of surfaces or off their person and then touch your face. So what are people recommending? If you're able, have the person in a separate room. If you're able, have the person um, who's sick have their own bathroom. If the person has to come out and interact with people in the family, this is a perfect indication for one medical mask. And the reason is you want to put the mask on the person who's sick. And so if in our apartment, if I was sick and I had to come out and interact with my family, before I would leave the bedroom, I would wash my hands, I would put on a mask, and then I would go out and maybe I would sit down and eat food at the table. And then after that, when I was done, I would eat the food, I would put it in the sink, I would make sure that anything I touched, which is a very simple area on the table, is just washed, and then I would go back to my room. And so the point is to not have sustained contact with someone in your home who has this disease. You're gonna wanna take care of them. You're gonna wanna be in and out of there. How are you doing? Checking their temperature. Don't do it. If you're touching the temperature probe constantly to their mouth, that is where the disease exists. And then you're going to get it on your hands, and then you're going to touch your face. And so you shouldn't be scared to stay at home with your family with a fever if you have COVID-19. The vast majority of people are going to have a fever, body aches, feel like shit for three to five days, feel a little less, less shit on seven, and then they're going to start to feel better. You can start interacting with your family more as you feel better, as your fever is gone, but you're still gonna be vigilant. You're gonna be washing your hands. You're gonna be a lot more confident 20 days out from the disease than you are 10 days out from the disease. The current recommendation from the CDC is that if I get sick and if I'm feeling better, I can put on a mask and go to work. And so I think that that is a good indication to you that 